good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you might be watching this video. Uh, this is Mr. Kennedy. I'm going to be your history instructor when we finally meet together in hopefully February. I'm also going to be your online instructor for the first month of the class. And since we can't meet each other in person, I wanted to do a quick video kind of explaining where everything is, how our Blackboard course is going to work, and what you can expect. And uh, this is going to be for the both the world history classes I have. So some of the information will be specific to you. Some of it will be for another course. But the information is going to be all the same. So if you're not in the history course with the CRN 40133, if you're in 41019, your course is going to look exactly the same. You both meet on Tuesdays, just on different campuses. So if you're at the LaGrange campus, we'll see you on Tuesday mornings. If you are on the Coweta campus, we'll see you on Tuesday afternoons. First thing I want to show you is what the Blackboard page is going to look like over here on the left, you can see the home page, the announcements, uh, syllabus, lessons. A couple of things are hidden from you. Uh, you won't see collaborate unless uh, you want to have a meeting with me. Uh, you won't see discussions at all. And the first place I'm going to go is where it says syllabus. This has some really important information on it for you. Uh, this is going to be where you find our contract. Uh, the course agreement form you have to do. Uh, there's going to be your syllabus. There's going to be some COVID-19 information on here, which I'll go over with you. Uh, how to contact me and what our daily schedule is going to be. So very, very first thing, let's look at the syllabus so we can see what you have to look forward to here. Okay. Now, our classes, when we do meet, are going to be on Tuesdays. If you are at the Noonan campus, Coweta, we're going to meet 3.30 to 4.45. If you are on the LaGrange campus, we're going to meet Tuesday mornings, 9.30 to 10.45. My email address is my name, jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. Uh, I am located on the Carroll campus normally. My, I'm sitting in my office right now. It's Office 306E, if you've ever been to Carroll. Carol's campus. Phone number 770-836-6867. Uh, I will be in my office usually on Wednesdays once things get to normal. Until February, I'm going to be in and out. Uh, you're welcome to leave a voicemail. Those voicemails are emailed to me or you can just email me as well. For office hours, uh, if you are in LaGrange, I'll be available after class in the classroom. If you want to come up to the Noonan campus, I'll be available Tuesdays from 2 to 3.30. Or if you want to come to Carrollton on Wednesdays, I'll be available from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. But of course, for those of you in LaGrange and for those of you in Noonan who can't come to, to Carrollton on Wednesdays, email, best option. I'll answer emails pretty much any day of the week, but Monday through Thursday for sure up until about 10 p.m. You've signed up for World History 1. There's a description here. I'm not going to read it because you can do that. But we're going to look at ancient stuff. We're going to go from, quote, the beginning of time up until about 1500 or so. Your textbook is free. So if somebody tells you you have to buy a book, just tell them that they're wrong. This is a link to the book right here. It's called World History, Cultures, States, and Societies to 1500. Honestly, we won't be using that a lot in class because I like to do my own lectures, but the textbook is there for you to read. Uh, my lectures follow along pretty much with the textbook. So it is there for you if you're somebody who needs the extra help and you need to read and you need to follow along with something that you can actually hold on to. Uh, it is a, an ebook. It's a PDF file that you can download. You can put it on your phone. You can put it on a tablet. You can take it anywhere with you. Scrolling down a little bit more until we get to course attendance. You do get graded for attendance. It counts as 5% of your final grade. For any week that 
we are online only, your attendance will be taken if you complete something. If you do um, a quiz, a discussion, if you complete one of those, you're counted as present. Once we switch to in-person learning, whenever that will be, hopefully the week of February 1st, you will actually have to be in class to be considered present. So while we're online, just complete some work so I know you're doing something. Once we go to in-person, you will have to be in-person. Some course-specific requirements. There's a section here about plagiarism. Uh, once again, I'll let you read that on your own. But the important thing to know about plagiarism is, first of all, it's a big deal, especially in history. Uh, there are professional historians who have lost their careers because they were caught copying and cheating from others. So all work in this class needs to be original. Uh, if you are caught plagiarizing, uh, there, are, there are punishments for you. And I can 100% promise you that your worst work is going to be better than anything that you're caught plagiarizing. I do give credit. I do give points for attempt as long as it's an original attempt. I know not everybody is going to be a historian. I understand that. Not everybody is the greatest reader uh, or the greatest writer. The point is, are you trying? Trying is important to me. So it's, it does say here, any lying, cheating, stealing, or plagiarism will result in a grade of zero for the assignment that you're caught on. And if there are multiple instances of plagiarism, you have to be turned into the dean of students and you could be removed from the class. So I beg and plead, don't plagiarize. Make sure all work is original. Grading is as such. We have two exams. There's a midterm exam and a final exam. Uh, totals 40%. That's 20% for your midterm, 20% for your final. I have reflection papers, which are opinion-based papers. I promise they're not nearly as hard as you think they are. You probably heard the word paper and freaked out, but they're opinion papers. There are certain things in the class that you're going to read, and then I want you to give me your heartfelt, honest opinion on those readings. There are a total of four of them. Four times five is where you get your 20%. There is a museum review as well. Uh, if this was a normal semester, I would ask you to go to a museum. But since we are still in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, you're going to be looking at virtual museums or a historical film. I'll leave that choice up to you. Where it says activities, that is your daily work, if you want to call it that. That's your quizzes and your discussions. There is a required essay. Everybody who is taking a history course at West Georgia Technical College has an essay they have to write. That's 10%. Participation is really attendance. If you show up every day and if you do all your work, you get an, you get a 100% for five. You get a 100 for 5% of your, your final grade. So participation is a very easy way to boost your grade if you need it. Now for specifics, uh, exams, there will be two exams in this class. They are not cumulative. And what that means is the first half of the class is the first test. Second half of the class is the second test. Those reflection papers are here. Um, they are focused on one of the assigned readings that are found in Blackboard. I'll show you those assigned readings in just a moment. They're about a page and a half to two pages long and always double space. For your first paragraph, you'll summarize whatever article you've read and you've chosen to write about. And for the rest of the, the paper, I want your ideas. You enjoyed reading whatever it is you've chosen. You hated reading whatever you've chosen. You disagree with it. You agree with it. You hate it. You like it. You want to know more about it. You never want to read it again. Literally, whatever your personal opinion of the article is. Now, some people ask, why do I ask you to do these reflection papers? I want you guys to be able to form your own opinion. I want you to be able to look at something, read it, digest it, and then formulate your own ideas about it. Now, that's actually really important when you get to the real world. Uh, if you go to a job and you're asked to read some papers, 
or make decisions, you have to be able to do that. And that's kind of what the reflection papers are supposed to do. Get you thinking on your own, get outside that box and be creative. For the museum exhibit review, it's kind of like one of those reflection papers. I want you to give your thoughts and your opinions of the virtual museum you look at or the movie you choose to watch. And then I have some questions that you might want to consider when you look at that museum exhibit review, such as, does the website make sense? Is there a logical order? Do they explain what you're looking at? Or are you completely clueless and you have no idea what to do? With the movies, if you choose to do a movie, does the movie follow the real events of the of the historical situation? Uh, is there something the movie does really well? Is there something the movie needs to improve on? So um, that's pretty open as well, and I'll show you that in just a moment also. Activities, let's see, assigned materials, that's watching these videos, that's doing in-class participation, whatever work we have, that's where that will go. For the SLO essay, uh, we'll talk about this more when we finally get in person, but I just want to let you know it's there. It says you must complete a five to seven page essay that explains the causes and effects of the Protestant Reformation. You're probably freaking out, oh my goodness, five to seven pages, I can barely write five to seven sentences. Or you might be saying, oh my goodness, I hate doing research. Don't worry about any of that. I'll walk you through step by step on what to do. And this topic of the Protestant Reformation, it is broad enough, it is big enough that you could probably write 50 to 70 pages. So five to seven pages, once you start researching what the Protestant Reformation is, you won't have too much problem, I guarantee it. But once again, we will talk more about this when we meet for the first time in person. Participation, once again, 5% of your final grade. And if you do get perfect attendance, I give extra points. I know how hard it is to complete 15 weeks worth of work. So I do reward that. Finally, extra credit. A lot of people like extra credit and my extra credit's really easy. If you do a second museum review, I give you two points on your final grade. Yes, that's right, your final grade. And last but not least on the syllabus is the course schedule. And I try to make this as easy to understand as possible. So you've got lesson, lesson folder one, lesson folder two, lesson folder three. What chapter in the book is it? So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And what is the topic we're covering? Well, this is our course introduction. I'll put up a second video with prehistory information so you have a little lecture to go along with PowerPoints. And then I have what assignments are due for this week. So for your very first week of class, you have to do the introduction, you have to complete the course agreement form, then you'll have to do your first discussion, your first quiz, and then last but not least, I have the due date on there. And I have a due date for every single week so that you can try and keep it in focus and you don't forget anything. Also scattered throughout, you have your reflection papers. For example, reflection paper number one will be due on the 8th of September. Not September, but the 8th of February. Don't know why I said September. Um, March 1st, you see reflection paper number two is due. Your midterm exam will be on March 9th. Spring break, August or April 6th. Then your museum review is going to be due on the 19th of April, reflection paper number four, the 26th of April. And then that SLO essay, I give you as much time as I possibly can. That is due on the last day, so you have all semester to work on that. Now you'll also see at the bottom of the syllabus page, I have that exact same course schedule. So there are two different places that you can find that information relatively quickly. There is a COVID-19 syllabus addendum, which I'll open for you right here. Um, I do want you to take some time to read this. Uh, if it's like the fall semester, you may have to sign some paperwork when we finally do meet face-to-face. -face. But just to summarize what this says, 
if you are feeling sick, if you think you have the symptoms of COVID-19, first of all, there's no shame in it. A lot of people are getting sick. Second of all, you're not going to be singled out if you are sick. We just need you to be healthy. Third of all, if you feel like you have these symptoms, there's an email address that we need you to email. It's right here, covid at westgatech.edu. Now, the reason that we need you to email that email address if you think you have COVID-19 symptoms now, is just so that the people on that response team can follow up with you, advise you on what to do, and if necessary, contact Trace to let anybody that you are around or any teachers or other students you are around know, hey, you may need to go get tested. So once again, if you have COVID-19 symptoms, get healthy, stay home, let your instructors know so you're not penalized, and let the West Georgia Tech COVID response team know as quickly as possible. Faculty contact information. This is just another place to get my information. My phone number, office location, office hours, email address are available underneath this contacts section, which once again is on that syllabus page. Now I'm going to click lessons so you can see what the lessons folder looks like. World History, Culture, States, and Societies to 1500. That is your textbook. If I click on this link, it will open the textbook here for you. And it looks just like a regular textbook. The only difference is that it's free instead of having to spend $100 on. You can see the different chapters here. And it has a bunch of information you can read, or it has pictures and images that you can look at. So it's a textbook. I mean, what else can we really say about it? Uh, some people enjoy reading textbooks, some don't. The reflection paper drop boxes is where your four reflection papers will be due. And you can see reflection paper number one, due date, February 8th at 11.59 p.m. Use any reading from lesson one through lesson three. Same thing, reflection paper two, three, and four. And then at the bottom, I have a reminder so that you can remind yourself very quickly, oh, this is what a reflection paper is instead of having to search through the syllabus. Museum review drop box. The museum review is due, once again, April 19th at 11.59 p.m. There is a reminder of what is expected for your museum review. And if I click on the museum review drop box, you'll see three things. Number one, the museum review drop box is at the top. Number two, your list of approved virtual museums. And then number three, you can see your approved historical films that you can watch. Now you have your choice, you can watch a film or you can watch or look at a website. I don't care which one you do, but you can do either or. The other thing about the museum review is it can be turned in at any time. As soon as you watch this video, you could then go and choose one of these movies and you could turn in your museum review right now. Uh, the only catch with the museum review is it has to be done by April 19th. Now, I will say that as the semester goes on and as we get back in face-to-face -face class mode, more and more and more work will be due and it'll get harder to keep up. So I always tell people, try and get this done as quick as possible just so you can get it out of the way. Because I mean, who doesn't like watching a good movie? And there are some really good movies on this list. Or, I mean, who sits in front of their computer every day? I know I do. So I can spend a couple minutes to look at one of these museums. Next, the SLO Dropbox is right here. Once again, don't worry too much about the SLO right now. Uh, we'll talk about that in February when we finally do meet. 
And then we come to our different lesson folders. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, they're all set up exactly the same. They all have the same information. So I'll just click on lesson two here. At the top, you have a study guide, so you get an idea of what you need to know and what you need to learn from this lesson. You've got the pages of the textbook if you choose to read the textbook. You've got a PowerPoint and lecture. Now, when you click on PowerPoint and lecture, you're going to see it says Lesson 2 Recording, Lesson 2 PowerPoint. Those are from a friend of mine who teaches at East Georgia College. Uh, you'll also see my own PowerPoint that I've made, such as this Mesopotamia PowerPoint. And then I will be putting in some lecture videos until we meet face to face as well. And for the first three weeks of class, I'm going to get those lecture videos up by, we'll say Tuesday at 3 p.m., which will give you almost an entire week to get your work done. But the PowerPoint that I make is right there. and You'll be able to tell the difference between my PowerPoints and my friend's PowerPoints. Online readings. These online readings are primary source documents. You're going to read them to help you answer your discussion questions. And these online readings are also going to be what you do with your reflection papers. So you'll choose one of the reflection or one of the one of the articles from lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and you'll use one of those to do your reflection paper. But you'll also be reading these online readings, these online documents to answer your discussion questions. Videos. I use the crash course videos. They're very good. They're put together by a guy named John Green, who is a very famous author. He's an armchair historian. His information is well researched. And it's a lot of information in 10 to 15 minutes. And the crash course videos are what you use for your quizzes. Your quiz will be in each chapter, a discussion will be in each chapter, and then further explorations. This is simply just if there's something more you want to learn, then you can click further explorations and there's some additional information there. Just to give you another example, lesson three looks the same. You can see the study guide, you can see PowerPoint, online readings video, quiz three, discussion three, further explorations, etc., etc. All right, now I know I only have a limited amount of time to keep you interested. In fact, you've probably already lost interest already, so I'm going to wrap this up. If you have any questions whatsoever, if you're worried about anything, email me, email me, email me. I will answer you as quickly as I can. And then once we get in person, if you have questions about anything, just ask, ask, ask. I promise I won't bite. I was a student once too. I understand what it's like. So um, until then, uh, look forward to the first video being put up Tuesday at 3 p.m. And um, that's going to be on prehistory. It'll be fairly short, probably about as long as this one. Till then, we'll see you. Look forward to meeting you all.